Hello everybody, it's Michael Dillon. I just washed my hands, uh, reset the video because I don't think it was oriented the right way. So here's my counter, here's my hands. Uh, I wanted to show you what we're going to be using today, all the ingredients. We got some, none of these are sponsored, Grey Poupon. And then we have this stuff. I get this from my Italian deli. It's really good. It's kind of like muffalata sauce, but it's got all these uh, seasonings. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, this cheese on here from Costco. It's some Gouda cheese. One tomato. And then some uh, Roman lettuce. And then some tuna that I made up yesterday. Maybe a pinch of Himalaya sea salt. I don't know. And then back here, my unrefrigerated Best Foods Real Mayonnaise. I don't re recommend that you... Oh, and a little bit of basil. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I don't recommend that you use... Um, unrefrigerated mayonnaise however oh and then I got these at Costco famous Dave's spicy signature spicy pickle chips I wanted a little jar of pickles and what did I get a giant jar because it's Costco spent $42 at Costco and I spent $19 at Tehran market where I was able to get the yogurt I want I'll show you that uh, I can't hardly read some of the words it's Alibala or Abalia probiotic yogurt. And uh, it's supposed to be real good. It's got a high fat content. So I'll do a review on that tomorrow. Um, what are we going to do here? I got a cutting board. That's what I got. I got these bamboo cutting boards. Highly not recommended, probably because they're not sanitary. Um, I like washing my lettuce. And I washed my tomato. I like washing my lettuce as I use it. And then I don't use one of those fancy dryers because I have a real small space here in my kitchen. You're looking at my kitchen counter, by the way. That's it. It doesn't get any bigger than that. Let's taste this lettuce. Mmm. Mmm. Now, I'm not supposed to eat food if you're cooking for people. I'm cooking for myself, so uh, I'm not worried about it. I have a higher level of cleanliness when I'm cooking for friends and family than I have for myself. I try to maintain a pretty clean kitchen. The best part about what we got going on here... Oh, and an avocado. That's going to be really good. I think this is the ripest avocado I have. Or is it this one? Mmm. I'm definitely, or this is the ripest avocado I have. And I'm going to need a knife or two. Oh, and a little bit of onion. One of the best things about this sandwich is it's going to have, you know when you hide your onion from yourself and you can't find it? I'm telling you, I hid my onion. I'm about to call the onion police. What did I do with my onion? Did I already take it out? Santa Maria. I might have I might have used it in um, some soup that I made. It's not in here. Well, I'm gonna take everything out of my crisper. You know, if you take everything out of your crisper, if you take if you take everything out of your crisper, you'll end up finding what you're looking for. So there's the onion. I'll leave it in the bag. I don't want to put it outside the bag. What else do we have going on here? So the coolest thing about these Costco things is you get 12, count them, 12 mediocre croissants from Costco. And when I say mediocre, it's better than flying to France and trying to get a French uh so I just sharpened my knife. Hopefully it'll be really sharp. How do you want to do this? Like this or on the outside? I think we'll do it like this. Oh, thank goodness it's sharp enough to cut. Sometimes it won't even cut bread. And that's when I know I got to resharpen it. Probably not supposed to cut into your hand. You're probably supposed to cut like this away from your hand. This is not a cooking class. Maybe if you have uh, some desire to uh, be in the shutdown lockdown, you might appreciate some of this stuff. So there's the main part. Take a little bit of this mayo right here. Part of the problem with my sandwiches is they end up being bigger than life and I can hardly manage them. 
So I'm gonna take a little mayo. I like, that's a little mayo. So some kids, when I was a kid, my mom would make me a sandwich and then she taught me how to make them. And then I'd go to school and that mayonnaise would get hot and if there was too much of it and I ate it late, left it in the sun and then ate it after I played on the playground, it might not have been that good. So I will admit to that. Um, so if you don't like mayonnaise because you had some bad experiences with it, I can sympathize with you, but you know, what are you going to do? A little bit of mustard there. I'll just, I'll probably get a jar of a uh, gray Poupon instead of that squirt jar because I don't like the way it, it dispenses out of there and it ends up being out of control. So I am getting really tired of my own cooking, by the way. So this stuff has a ton of ingredients. It's got some olive oil in it or some kind of virgin olive oil or something. So I just take a little scoop of it like that. And then I just put it on here. It's pretty good. I've also put some of this in the tuna I made, so probably overkill. Um, I'll take this little tomato and start slicing her up. Usually what I do is I buy these hothouse tomatoes. And if there was two of us here, I'd be happy to make two sandwiches with these two tomatoes. Since there's not, I end up eating the ends because they don't go well on your sandwich. And then I'll load it up. One, two, and I cut out the core right there. Three. And I got one more I can put in there. It's going to be one of those big sandwiches. It's really hard to manage. And you kind of have to eat it in private because now I don't know what to do. I just have to eat these. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's real good. All right. Sorry, I'm snacking. Then... I'll take my little towel... I really use these like rags. I probably wash them. I probably go through two or three a day. I just use them and then I throw them in the wash. Because if you're going to wash one rag, you may as well wash six. So that's why I just throw them in the darn wash. I don't even, I don't even hesitate to try to conserve because if I have to wash something, I'm going to do a whole load. Put some onion on there. All right. Then I gotta like break that lettuce up a little bit so I don't bite the whole thing. Sometimes I'll just take the stem out. I don't need that. There's a little bit of lettuce. What else do we gotta put on here? Oh, we gotta put some pickle chips. I'm gonna put the lid back on the mayo. So when I was in New Orleans, I went to this bar called Checkpoint Charlie's on Frenchman. And I was amazed that they had the ketchup and the mustard in the normal spot. But what was amazing is when I asked for the mayonnaise, they said it's right next to the ketchup. And I, and I was like, okay, I can't even open that. Oh, I must be getting weak hands. So I uh, couldn't believe it, but the ketchup and the mayonnaise were in a tray that should have had ice in it in a, nor in, in a normal world. But in New Orleans, there's not, no such thing as normal. And I, uh, <laughs> the funny thing was, the mayonnaise was not refrigerated either. So I told my friends about it. I said, the mayonnaise is not refrigerated. And they said, you don't have to refrigerate mayonnaise. Now, it's hotter than heck in New Orleans. I don't know if you ever know what it's like to be that hot. It is really hot in New Orleans. And gosh, I asked a friend. And then I asked my, my caterer chef, and they said, as long as you don't refrigerate mayonnaise at all, it doesn't have to be refrigerated. Once you refrigerate it, then you have to refrigerate it. And I kept an eye on that mayonnaise, and it never went bad. I would always go back to Checkpoint Charlie's, get me a hamburger and some fries, and son of a gun, if it did not need... I like extra onions. What the heck? Son of a gun if it did not need any uh, refrigeration. 
So I'm going to try it. I bought this thing of Best Foods Mayonnaise. I'm in California. I'm going to see if the same rules apply to California. You know how some people say, well, you can take off your PPE if you're eating because that's okay. So I'm going to see if this mayonnaise knows the difference between being in Louisiana and being in California. Because if it knows the difference, then it'll spoil in California, but it won't spoil in Louisiana. So I cut that, careful not to go through your finger. And then some, some of these avocados I've had for too long. You know, it's hard as a single man to uh, cooking for one person to get avocados and eat them enough of them when you buy them at Costco. I try, but it's hard. All right, so there's the, the, the meat and potatoes of the sandwich. Now, it's important for me, you got to hit a little salt. So I got this salt from a very... Uh, very special uh, lady who's no longer with us. I got that salt shaker. I really like that salt shaker because I didn't have a salt shaker from my grandma no more because it rusted out. The stainless steel made in Japan wasn't really stainless. Imagine that. So I got that salt shaker there. But when I went to the Tehran market where everything's cheaper, they're nicer, they don't give you a hard time about the kind of face mask you wear. And they even were positive about my shirt. If you're a friend of mine, you know what shirt I was probably wearing here in a beautiful Santa Monica. So I guess you just take this like, and you go like that and you sprinkle it over it. Because you gotta salt your tomatoes. You gotta salt your, your, uh, your what you call it, uh, avocados. And, and some of you will probably tell me there's enough salt in this oil stuff in the pickle, but that's okay. I like salt. And you take this. Now, I went away for four hours and left this on the counter, but that's okay because as a kid, you probably had a school lunch with a tuna sandwich in it. And you probably uh, left your tuna sandwich and you ate it four hours later. So I'm not worried about it. I've got a stomach like a dog. Don't try this at home. This is just how I do it. Now, get a little bit, get back over there. And that's basically how I make my sandwich. I, I didn't make the tuna. Um, there's a lot going on right now, and I'm cooking at home. I don't like it, but uh, here in, in the beautiful uh, city of Santa Monica in the state of California, Everybody's scared to death to open up a restaurant, and apparently the governor, I don't have a TV, so I don't know these things. Somebody just recently told me the governor opened up for two weeks to barbers. I don't understand that, and because uh, I don't get a haircut, uh, to barbers, sorry Mel, I don't like getting haircuts, to barbers and to restaurants, he opened up, and then two and a half weeks later, they closed it down. So uh, who knows what's going on with that. But in case you're watching this video in a year or two from now, that's all pointless because here's the sandwich. Now, the hard part, everything's right here. The hard part is to eat this sandwich gracefully. So I'm going to take my Corel that I bought at Target. Uh, I bought these plates here now 31 years ago. I'm going to take those iris ones and I'm going to put this here. Oh no, it's getting away from me. Got to stick it back in there. I'm going to put this right here. Ah, it's falling apart. And I'm going to try to mush it in there like that. So it's all mushed in there. Now it's important. I don't know if you can see it, but I got a roll of paper towels right here. It's important that you grab a paper towel before you start feeding yourself this. Mmm. Right now is the time where you give me a big thumbs up a like and a subscribe. This is Michael Dillon. Thanks for sharing with your friends. Give me a comment. Tell me what I did wrong.